Hi everyone, welcome back to MD VOD, where today we're talking about obesity. One alarming fact about obesity is that one in three children or adolescents are either overweight or obese. And obesity, we know, leads to many side effects and diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, and stroke. Um, Today, we are joined by a very special guest, uh, an incredible role model for kids and adults, uh, Mr. Marcellus Wiley. Hey, how Marcellus, you doing, thanks, for, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. You know, um, you, you are, are an incredible role model. You you're, uh, played a decade in the NFL. Uh, you are a pro bowler, uh, amazing defensive end, and uh, an NFL analyst. I love watching uh, when you're on. And uh, now you're a host on uh, Max and Marcellus. Yeah. Um, what can you tell uh, kids today um, about staying fit and, uh, and getting off the couch and exercising? Well, we're trying to make a, a change in the culture and I've partnered up with a group, Optimus Sport, in which we're talking to the kids about that balance. And as I was projected to be an athlete, I knew where I could go and meet my fitness goals. And I had to balance that out with my nutritional goals as well. But for the kids out there, the 97% that go to the school that aren't on the football team, that aren't on the basketball team, what are their nutritional goals? What are their active lifestyle goals? So right now we're trying to make sure we issue a challenge to these same kids and to all the youth across America that they need to be challenged as well and go out there, set goals and meet them. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a great program, um, Optimus Sport. Um, and it's designed to actually identify kids um, uh, that might be at risk um, and those that aren't, um, but to really encourage them to exercise and uh, eat right, um, which down the road um, really decreases their risk of uh, heart disease, stroke, uh, diabetes, et cetera. Um, Marcellus, what, what did you do uh, when you were a kid uh, growing up here in LA? Um, what do you think motivated you to, to, to stay fit? Well, I think first and foremost, it was the fact that I was active. Um, I remember running around the neighborhood and it wasn't in any kind of sport. It was just running in front of the house for my friends. And um, it was before all the video game craze. So uh, we were incentivized to go outside and just have fun. And it started off me just running up and down the street and then that turned into someone brought a football out in front of the house and next thing you know, uh, we're playing football like we're NFL players, but we're seven years young just running around the neighborhood. But I think right then uh, that started our engines and helped me participate uh, one day in athletics. Uh, you just think about when you want to go out there and live a well-balanced life. And at that age, you're not even thinking, what's a balanced life? But you already have the structure in place. You already have to go to school for six hours a day. And then after school, what are you gonna do? So um, I think initially, because of my participation in football, in track, in basketball, I already had that structure and those goals in mind. So you, you are doing now uh, what you did pretty much as a kid, but you're seeing now how kids need to have that same sort of motivation. Um, you're also, what's amazing to me is, uh, you know, you do so many things, uh, and, and I'm sure your time is incredibly valuable, uh, but you still, you're committed to these kids. And uh, I know you're doing uh, some work with Optimus Sport and uh, uh, Crenshaw and Dorsey High Schools. Can you tell us a little about that? Yes, um, we're a part of the Delta Youth Challenge, and that's going to be a challenge in which we're going to challenge the students at Crenshaw High School and Dorsey High School in Los Angeles. And when most people hear those two schools' names, they start to think of athletics. And they're great in athletics, they're great in basketball, they're great in football. And they are rivals every single year in those sports. But what about the people in the stands? What about those kids on the cheerleading team, the kids that are in the stands, the kids that are just students at the school? who want to be able to go out there and share in that same energy and share in that same space of passion and issue them a challenge to go over there and compete against Dorsey if you're a Crenshaw, compete against Crenshaw if you're a Dorsey. Now we're going to issue that Delta Youth Challenge to those kids and we're going to measure them. We're going to measure your heart risk factors. We're going to measure your wellness factors. And once we do that, we're going to incentivize you to go and improve on those same numbers. Once those measurables are calculated, then we're going to see which school had the greatest increase in their wellness risk factors. 
That's great, uh, great advice to kids, and it's a great program. Uh, teaching people early um, to exercise and eat right, um, at, right here in LA, I think that's awesome uh, that you're involved with these kids. Um, I, I gotta ask you a question. I, I went to school back east, um, like you, uh, and um, you ended up going to Columbia University, and I'm sure yes. that was not your only choice. Why, why did you end up choosing Columbia? Uh, well, I was a six foot, 185 pound running back at the time, so, as you wow. see me sitting here now, uh, I've gained a couple more pounds since then, but also a few inches. But uh, I was highly recruited, but uh, there were a lot of Pac-10 schools, a lot of local schools. And once again, I always talk about that balance, whether it's nutrition and an active lifestyle or if it's your schoolwork and academics and your athletics. I wanted to go to a school that I could create that balance and go out there and have the best of both worlds. So Columbia offered me that opportunity. Um, not only would I be able to have an opportunity to play Division I football, but I'd still be able to go out there and challenge myself academically. And moving to New York City, um, that was obviously a huge part of the deal, but I just wanted to go somewhere where I didn't have to sacrifice anything and still go out there and have a balanced life. That's great, great advice. Uh, so academically successful, uh, it's incredible, and uh, uh, clearly athletically uh, successful now in your life uh, as a host, it's awesome. Um, a role model literally to all of us. Uh, one of the other things that uh, I, I learned that uh, through a, a mutual friend, Alan Morelli, uh, yes. uh, with Optimus Sport, um, was about your interest in the sport of swimming. Can you tell us about how, how, that, how that came about? Yeah, well, it came about, I met Alan three years ago um, through ESPN and at the Super Bowl, and uh, we hit it off immediately. And um, I've been a participant in the Distance Swim Challenge um, since its inaugural year, uh, two years ago. And I remember going out there in practice sessions, and this was a challenge for me because uh, I just heard of the Red River tragedy in Louisiana uh, where uh, six kids drowned and none of the kids knew how to swim. Mm -hmm. and, and sadly enough, none of the adults around knew how to swim. So um, that really kind of incentivized me to go out there and learn how to formally swim. And it was a challenge. I mean, I couldn't go 25 meters on day one. And imagine if day one is a month before I'm in the ocean swimming 1.2 miles. And that was just my progression to go out there and create awareness. Um, it's a sad statistic, but in the African-American community, 70% of African-Americans cannot formally swim. And I just wanted to make sure I brought some kind of awareness to the cause and wanted to issue the challenge to myself to learn to, to, learn to swim because it's not just about having an active lifestyle when you're talking about swimming. It's also a life-saving activity if you go out there and you learn how to formally swim. I'm so uh, I am so fired up uh, to do this. I, I I'll tell you, it's a brutal swim. Oh, a, it, 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 it is a brutal one. It's but like it's 11 a, miles <laughs> in, in the yeah. water. It looks yeah. brutal. It uh, is. It, I mean, it, some people go that far, but you know, um, this year what's interesting is we're going to have the Delta Wellness Challenge, and in the Delta Wellness Challenge, we're going to have the same kind of competition for those who have the most improvement. Hmm. So it's not just about the fastest swimmer. It's not about first place. It's about about where did you start? What were your risk factors before you started to practice, before you started to engage in this activity? Mm -hmm. And then what happens once you cross the finish line? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to create, that kind of energy where the competition isn't just focused in on the football field, on the basketball court. It's focused in on your life and you're challenging yourself. I want to uh, just thank you uh, so much, uh, Marcellus, for being here. Talk about uh, just an incredible role model uh, for all of us. I mean, for kids in particular, but for all of us. You know, look, uh, conquering your fears, uh, looking at what you're afraid of, going out and doing it. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, hats off to you uh, for helping these kids and, uh, uh, you know, bringing awareness to wellness and, and uh, preventing, you know, disease in the future. Optimus Sport, what a great company. And uh, thank you very, very, very much well, for doing you for what you do. Thank you for this opportunity, too. Thanks a lot, Marcel. I'll see you in the water. All right. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs>
for any episodes you might have missed, they're available at the EmpowerBee.tv website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave us any comments and questions so that we can better help you deal with your disease. We'll see you next time on MDVOD.